by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcde.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Mary Urena. And this is movie time. It seems to be, I don't know if it was our last time that we did Guernsey. We did Guernsey or Tenet? I've got COVID brain. I'm losing track. Yeah, I think we did Guernsey, the Guernsey Literary Society. Yes. And we enjoyed it. Very From much. what I understand, I think both of us were enthusiastic about it. Yes. And then I had seen Summerland, and you subsequently saw that as yes. well. So we're into World War II. We are. Can with, we, a, with British origin. <laughs> that's right. So we have one that nobody out there has heard about. Probably not. <laughs> I know. It's called A Call to Spy. Yes, and it's a play on A Call to Arms. I know, I know. And I think they could have had a better title. Probably. It's a bit of an awkward title. <laughs> it is. What's it about, Mary? It's based on the lives of, of three women who, who actually existed. It's considered a historical fiction of their lives that did uh, intertwine as part of the special operations executive out of Britain um, during the early stages of World War II. And this um, spe SOE office specifically started recruiting women um, because they felt that they would be the least obvious to Germany and uh, the Nazis and their special police forces that sure, yeah. were part of France. And so it followed, this story follows the three women um, whose names I can't specifically uh, remember. Uh, Virginia Hall was one. That's right, Vera. American. Vera Atkins, Vera Atkins. The, it's British. And, and then Noor. 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 I'll just call right. her Noor. Yes, yes. Is the um, Indian Muslim descent British uh, civilian who uh, was recruited for radio operations. Oh, and isn't that, to me, it would just brought right to center focus for me how important that communications element was. And we take for granted now how easily we communicate then. Well, and just how risky it was, because oh. as a radio operator, you had to carry a, a pretty bulky yes. um, piece of equipment. You had to find a place to erect the antenna. You couldn't broadcast for more than 20 minutes because it would mean more likelihood that your signal would be picked up uh, yes. in terms of exact location because the Germans had um, basically bands that were sweeping um, with equipment on them to try and pick up radio signals. Yes. And um, so it was very, very dangerous work and oftentimes these women were not trained to the extent that their male counterparts were because there was such an urgency and oftentimes they were dropped into France and other parts of Europe without the full training that they needed. So yeah. it's a fascinating story oh. and it's certainly one that deserves to be told and, and seen. Uh oh Mary, I'm so uh, what I'm so thrilled that we give women their just due for this. You know we're yes, we have Wonder Woman. Yes, we do pump it all up, you know, but a real heroic women, this is a wonderful thing to see. And of course, I mean, Churchill immediately uh, glommed onto this idea that they would be able to infiltrate the occupied part of France uh, much more easily than men. Yes. And I love his... They could I, assimilate more easily yeah, in society. I, and then the way they're describing, he just said, yeah, you know, something like, and this is what I want, and do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there was a lot of resistance within oh. uh, the British military and spy hierarchy, um, intelligence hierarchy, that um, really made it tough. Barry Atkins actually was the executive assistant to General Buckmaster, yes. who oversaw SOE, yes. and she really had to fight oh, to uh, get these women uh, uh. trained and approved and even had to fight for them while they were on the ground. Um, oftentimes there was conflict between was this broadcast really coming from Noor, whose code name was Madeline. Yes. Um, they had built-in checks so that they knew that it was the right person. Um, 
but uh, you know, there, there came a point in the film and in, in real life where uh, Noor was compromised and they had her radio, they had yes, some uh, of her code. You know, that's one of the most suspenseful parts of the film. The film is not overly suspenseful as I thought it would be. Yeah, it, it's really not. I agree with you. That was I was surprised at how flat it sometimes came Exactly, across. yeah, yeah. And uh, Noor was the, only, the part where you were really anticipating. Mm -hmm. You just knew she was vulnerable, and yes. as you said, because they were able to find her signal and to come and get her, and when they did, that was... It. Otherwise, uh, one of the less suspenseful side uh, bars is, um, it would be Virginia's being Jewish, that she's been trying to get a diplomat, become a diplomat, and she knew that besides being a, having a bum leg or having a amputated leg, yes. that she was also Jewish. And she also had tried for many years to become a, a U.S. diplomat, yes. and for multiple reasons was denied. One was they lost her paperwork, another was that you know she uh, didn't score well enough on her exams, and then finally it was because she was an amputee and had a, a wooden leg. Yeah. And so SOE was willing to take a chance on this American citizen, and she became uh, one of the most successful in the Allies' eyes and one of the most successful in the Nazis' yes. eyes. Um, she became the most wanted spy uh, during World War II for them with code name Artemis. And the yeah. fact that she had a wooden leg and walked with a limp, and right. you thought she would have been pretty obvious and pretty vulnerable. At one point during the film, they do portray how close the Nazis came to apprehending her, and she ends up escaping through the Pyrenees yes. in the dead of winter with her wooden leg um, called Cuthbert. Uh, really it, causing her problems because it really wasn't built for that type of terrain. Right. And, with a little more research, I found out that she actually uh, was profusely bleeding from her stump, uh, uh, trying to make. She basically walked up the Pyrenees sideways oh, I, with I know. this leg, I and know. she also hired someone, a guide, to take her yes, over the yes. Pyrenees, which they do portray. But I think there was a missed opportunity in that most of those guides, um, if they felt you were slowing them down or you were making them vulnerable to capture themselves, they would just leave you behind or even kill you. So it was even precarious for her to be trusting her life to this guide to take her across yes. the mountains. And, and, and that tension really wasn't portrayed. I, I, I agree again. It's the same point that we agree on in, in developing the suspense. They didn't quite do it. And in that monumental journey in the, the Pyrenees, it just didn't seem to catch no. that tension. That, and, that, and just how much of a struggle it was oh for her, God. and whether or not she she would make it make it into Spain and make it back to Britain. Right. There are also a couple other things cinematically uh -huh. uh, from a, a, a standpoint of where was this film really shot and in what era. At the very beginning of the film, and I don't know if you remember this, no. She's going in to meet with Vera Atkins for the first time. Okay. And she goes into this building that from the exterior, it looks like it's um, London. Um, but there's no signs of World War II happening. There's no sandbags. There's no taped you windows. You are so right, yes. Um, and then she walks in, and all of a sudden, you're in this bright, fully glass, bright lit, it looks very modern lobby. And you're just kind of twisting your head a little bit, going, where was this film shot? <laughs> <laughs> um, so there were some um, unfortunate choices. A little bit made. loose. A, a little, little bit, bit loose. loose. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I think this, that it doesn't rank as high for me in other World War II stories, such as the two that I mentioned at the beginning mm -hmm. of the show. But it, it, still, it still thrills me to think of it as subject matter and to think of them doing it. And also because isn't uh, Vera also the writer? Uh, not, Vera, not Vera. Virginia Hall. Virginia Hall. Hall uh, right. Sarah, Sarah Megan Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. And she stars as Virginia Hall. She wrote it and she also produced it. Pretty sharp. Very sharp. Although I was I had to get over when I was first looking at her face 
She and Christian Bale are doppelgangers. Oh my! They are female Good male thought. versions of the same I, person. You know, I didn't come across, but I I thought there was something very familiar. I, and I was so distracted by it at the beginning. <laughs> but that's in fleet aside. But um, the other aspect of the film that I really appreciated is that it's an all female production team. Boy oh boy! Um, yes. Which female director, female writer, female stars, um, female executive producers. Um, so in an industry that continues to struggle with um, equity and yeah, inclusion right. as it relates to gender, among other uh, things, it was really refreshing to see a strong female story sure. and told the, from a complete female yes. creative team point of view. And in the cast, not that many strong men. No. Uh, I, I was hopeful for the doctor. And wouldn't you know, I have to. I, I, I wanted a formula. I wanted him and her to be in love. I wanted that. See, Isn't you're it? romantic at I, I know it. And, and I would complain <laughs> if it were, if it came. But I'm sitting there and say, what am I missing here? Oh, I mean, these two look like them. Well, I hope this makes you feel better. In real life, Virginia Hall did fall in love and marry a fellow spy. Oh, good. Who was 10 years her junior. Oh, oh really? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised with her at all. <laughs> oh, well, Mary. The film is A Call to Spy. What grade would you award it? I give it a solid B. Oh, and I do too. Uh, I don't know, maybe I should give it a B plus just to be different from you. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with B plus. Okay. But I think our audience gets the idea, if you're into this at all, if you've seen any of these World War II picks, I love them, even if it lacks the suspense and tension that we wanted it to have. And, it, and if you like spy films, these women, both on film and in real life, James Bond cannot hold a candle to them. <laughs>